In the world of 35mm SLR film photography, brands like Canon, Nikon, Pentax, and even Minolta are what most people are introduced to when starting out. With that being said, there's a brand out there that definitely isn't as common, but which I think is one of the best. That brand is none other than Contax, and it's one of my personal favorites. Contax has a storied history, and there's a good chance that you've probably heard of it before, with the name starting out as a rangefinder and then an SLR model manufactured by the legendary Zeiss Icon in the mid 20th century. The Contax brand I'm going to talk about today came to life in 1973 when Carl Zeiss licensed the name to Yashica, forming a partnership with the intention of creating a new line of SLR cameras and lenses. Contax were players on the market until 2005 when all production was stopped. In part two of this video, I'm gonna talk about the lens lineup, but it's worth mentioning now that all of the Contax lenses were designed by Carl Zeiss and have the reputation of being some of the finest 35 millimeter optics ever produced, a statement that I would definitely agree with. In this episode, I'm gonna focus on two camera bodies that I think are excellent options for anyone looking to start building up a Contax kit, the Contax RTS and the Ashika FX3 Super 2000. Both very capable cameras sporting some very different features. I picked up my RTS and FX3 both for around $100 US each. That's definitely on the higher end of what these go for, but they were both film tested and in excellent condition, which is a premium to me that I don't have an issue paying more for. The RTS was first released in 1974 and was the first of three variants of Contax's professional real-time system line of cameras. The FX3 Super 2000 was released in 1986 by Yashica and was the third variant of the very popular FX3 series. The RTS is a fully manual camera, but it offers an aperture priority mode as well. It has shutter speeds from bulb to 1 2000, has a depth of field preview down here, self timer, mirror lockup on the other side, and then even offers exposure compensation. The Super 2000 is also a fully manual camera, but it doesn't have any automatic exposure modes. It still offers shutter speeds from bulb to 1 2000, and it does have a self timer, but it doesn't have any mirror lockup or depth of field preview like the RTS. When it comes to basic specs, both cameras share a lot of similarities. I originally purchased the Super 2000 because of its fast maximum shutter speed and the fact that it's the same as the RTS at 1 2000. But when it comes to ergonomics and build quality, that's where the similarities start to end. The RTS sports a metal body and is heavy and solid feeling in the hands, but still manageable and not bulky. The dials and film advance lever feel very precise and of high quality, and overall it feels like a professional camera when it comes to the build. The FX3 on the other hand has a metal chassis with a plastic body. It's still very durable, but it feels a bit cheap compared to the RTS. The film advance isn't as smooth, and overall the operation lacks the same precision as the RTS. It feels like a cheaper camera, which it always has been. And this is where I'm torn between the two cameras. Even though the FX3 has a plastic body and isn't as precise, it's a little bit lighter and a little bit smaller in the hands, which is nice if you're traveling or looking for a little bit of a smaller kit to take with you. Also, the FX3 has this grip here on the side of the camera, which is really nice. On the RTS, I find my fingers are always hunting for something to grab onto on the right side. When it comes to the viewfinders, the RTS displays the aperture on the top and the shutter speeds down the right side, with an LED readout marking the correct shutter speed and a small green tab marking the current shutter speed selected. The Ashika, on the other hand, simply has three LEDs, a green one indicating correct exposure and a red plus or minus indicating over or under exposure. Definitely not as nice as the RTS, but I found it does the job just fine. The only thing I miss on the Ashika is the fact that the shutter speed and the aperture aren't displayed in the viewfinder. You actually have to pull your eye away and check manually on the camera or lens body. Not a huge deal, but it is a nice feature on the RTS. The last major difference between the cameras, and it's an important one, is the operation. The RTS is a fully electronic camera, and therefore it requires a battery at all times for the camera to operate. So if your battery dies, your camera basically becomes a giant brick. The FX3, on the other hand, is a fully mechanical camera. It only requires a battery for the light meter to work. So if your battery dies, you can still shoot all day long with this camera. Also, although the RTS has been super reliable so far for me, it does have a reputation for issues with the electronics. This is a 40-year-old camera, and the electronics may not last forever. 
Before I wrap up, I wanna talk about one more thing, and that is what Contax refers to as their electromagnetic shutter release system. Basically, it's a super sensitive shutter release, and I fired off more black frames with this camera than any other one I own. Personally, it's a feature that I really don't like. Overall, the RTS offers a few more features, higher build quality, and more precision, whereas the FX3 Super 2000 feels a bit cheaper and lacks some of the conveniences that the RTS offers. With that being said, if I had to pick one, as much as I like the RTS, I'd have to go with the Ashika. The fact that it's fully manual and doesn't rely on batteries for operation is a big one for me, and I definitely prefer the ergonomics with the small right-hand grip. Overall, even though I prefer the Ashika, both cameras are great options if you're looking to get into the contact system. Regardless of which one you choose, I really don't think you can go wrong as either body is gonna gain you access to the wonderful world of Zeiss optics. By far, my favorite lenses on the market and exactly what we're gonna talk about in the next episode.